This tutorial is going to be about the editing basics in Premiere Pro. So we have our footage, we have our timeline, and I'm just going to go through what everything is in here and then uh, sort of how to use a bunch of the basic functions. So um, let's start with the files here. Okay, so we know that if we double click, they will show up in the preview here. Um, and then, so how do you play them? Well, you can play it back like this, hit the play button, and the footage will play back. You can see it. You can select on the little toggle here that you can scroll down and you can, so to quickly find something that you want, maybe it's right, maybe you wanted the horse's head here. You knew you had a shot like that. And you can also to, to really get in there fine you can go frame by frame as well either there or back frame by frame okay so once you got it to the, the spot that you want to um, keep to put into your timeline you use these two right here okay so one's mark in one's mark out so i'm going to mark in and i'm just going to play and i'm going to go okay i want to take that chunk there so then you mark and you can see here it marked in and it's going to the end of the clip still but if i mark out now it's just going to keep this little section. And if you're still not happy, you can expand it a little bit um, or shrink it, whatever you need to. To drag it into the timeline, all we do is click on the image. And you can see there's like a hand like gripping it there. And it moves it down here. I'm still holding the, I'm still clicked down. And then I can drop it in my timeline. Now, when this comes up, the clip does not match the sequence settings. So when you open your project, you either set it to 720p or you set it to 1080p. And for me, I set it to 1080p and then this footage I dragged in somehow doesn't match. Or maybe it's MP4 and this is supposed to be an, uh, uh, that's M4V, sorry, and mine would be an MP4 or whatever setting. So something doesn't match. I'm a fan of chain, keeping the existing settings. So I set it to 1080p30. I'm going to try and put all of my footage in as 1080p30. I think I see it right here. So mine was 1080p30. This is 60, 59.94. So it's actually 60 frames per second. So that's why it's different. So I'm going to just say keep setting sequence settings. You can click um, change if you want. Um, but And then it'll match you, your timeline to your footage. But if you see here, I have some footage that's 30 frames and some that's 60. So I'm just going to keep it as is. Keep existing settings. Okay, so I'm going to go and look. And now you notice that when I preview this one with this toggle, wherever this line is, that's what my preview is over here. And this is my sort of master timeline. So this is my master um, program uh, preview window. Okay, so and if you so I'm gonna go in. I'm just gonna grab a few extra quick clips here, and you can take them from the same clip. So you can take multiple ones from the same clip here. So I'm gonna take that one. It happened first, so maybe I'll put it before it, and maybe I'll get that little section there and drag that in. Okay, so I now I have a few clips in a row and they, they play back to back to back again same kind of buttons here I can preview it back by hitting play and it'll go through each of my shots okay so what else do you have up here well what if we just want the video well then you can just grab this instead instead of grabbing the whole one up here you can just grab this and it'll just be a video piece that comes in, you notice. So I didn't show you this before. So this top, everything above this double, these are video up here. This is video. And everything below is going to be audio. And you can go to a ton of layers for video and for audio. If I just want the audio, then it's this one. I just drag this one in and make sure you go, you're going to be like, how come I can't drop it? Because remember, it's got to be below the line. So then in this case, they're the same clip. So I'm going to match them up and put them together um, nothing else we really need to know up here except for if you're having trouble viewing it you can like right now i have it at quarter speed playback it doesn't actually change when we export in the end it doesn't change the quality it just makes it easier for the computer to play it back so you see how like clear it is and when i push play here it kind of gets a little bit blurry right and when i stop it it clears up again i like that just because it makes sure my i can play my footage 
clean through, but you can put it back to full quality or half quality. I like quarter. And it's the same thing over here. So in this case, it was at half when we were viewing this one. And this is going to be the place where it's going to have a, a struggle playing back. So I like to put that one at quarter as well. And then maybe once I've done everything I need to do, then I maybe put it back to full and try and watch it just to make sure. Okay, so our next section is our kind of timeline viewing section over here. And we have tools, we have the timeline, we have some functions over here, and then we have our audio levels. So within this um, section, see how these clips are really small? Well, you can use this bar. This bar does two things. You can click in the middle of it to scroll over if you have a really long sequence with a lot of clips in it. Or if it's really short like this, or if you really want to zoom in, you can grab the end of one of these. And if you bring them closer together, then it expands out so you can get a closer look at your footage. I don't know if you notice, so I'll get a different um, clip here. So I'll get a shot of my wife with my daughter. And so if that was the, another clip that I wanted to bring in, when I brought bring these clips in, I don't know if you noticed, but see this? If I get them close enough, there's these little triangles that kind of pop up and that black line. So the program, there's I'm going to show you which button it is, but that you want that if you want the clips together. But you can also just place them wherever if you want. In order to, like, let's say you are you accidentally clicked on this. So this is what it's called, snapping your footage together. So if, that, if that's not highlighted and you bring it in and you're trying to, like sometimes you don't know like you're now you're cutting off the other clip or maybe there's a little gap between them it makes it really tough so if you're not sure then just drop it in somewhere else and then re-click on this snap magnet and then go back to your footage and you can bring it in and it'll snap in okay and I'm gonna delete that one because it's a double now okay and let's say you have a, a gap in footage here and there's a whole bunch of clips over this way like let's say it's more like this right and you're like oh man I don't want to drag each of these over one at a time you can also click in between and hit delete and it'll bring your clips together okay and then let's look at the tools here so our tools that was everything I was doing there was with this selection tool so that's like the normal arrow that you can grab things move them around the other thing that the selection tool can do is if you go to the end if you have more space in your clip, you can you can still expand your clip if you need. Maybe you cut it too short, or you need to fill in a little bit of a gap. Um, let's say you've matched it all to music. Everything's to music, and you have this little gap. You might want to. I like to put the blue like line in, and then I it'll bring it. It'll like snap it to that spot, and then maybe I expand this one to snap it in, and now we've filled that that gap so it's it looks smooth and you can also trim it down so maybe you want it shorter you can you can get it shorter other um, kind of quick tools to learn here um, that I use all the time is the razor so the razor is simply you go to something and you want to split it in two uh, just some sort of clip that you want to take and maybe you want to do something cool with it where it goes from one clip and then it comes back to the other or you're just like it's too long. I don't. I don't want to trim it down. I'm just gonna cut part of it off and delete it. So there's a couple of reasons why you might want to um, use the slice, the razor tool. And for these other ones, I'm not gonna really worry about it right now. Maybe the the type tool will come in handy, but I can do a separate tutorial on that. Okay. Um, here's your time. So as you're scrolling along, this is so we're 10 seconds in there, 11 seconds, 12 seconds. Uh, for each layer, you can. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. So there's a the couple main ones here. So this is video one, video two, video three, and you can click this the eyeball on a certain layer if you want to. Uh, let's say you have something underneath. Like let's say I had this clip. Um, later on, when you're doing other editing, you're going to have some clips over top of other clips, and you're like, oh, I want to see what's underneath there to see which which I should use, which one's better. Well, then you can click the eyeball here and go. Okay, well that's what's, now when I click the eyeball, now I can't see this video layer 2, and I'm seeing video layer 1 only there. So I'm going to bring it back, and I'll put this clip back where it's supposed to be. Okay, and then you can lock. So maybe you're you're moving some footage, um, 
maybe you want to move um, this clip and maybe there's an actually let's go like this maybe there's like two clips like this and you want to move these two but you want to keep these ones well you can lock that layer of audio and video and then you can just kind of highlight that section and move that footage to where you need it or delete it or whatever you have to do okay so that allows you to lock something and move it the other reason that lock can come in handy let's say you brought in both audio and video and you're like i don't want this audio well you can lock the video layer and then click on the audio and delete it get rid of it i'm gonna undo that and bring it back and that's uh that's kind of it for us in here uh ex actually except um so our audio layers so audio levels so as as i play it you can see over here that this shows how loud the the footage is and for most things um you want to be able to match up your your audio to be the same le levels so within our um there's another tutorial that's going to be about adjusting audio levels another thing uh in the timeline here is if you see this yellow line here that means that the footage, it might be red, it might be green, might be yellow, there's different colors. It means that it's not fully rendered. So remember I said to keep my sequence settings and these clips were different. They were 60 frames per second instead of 30. So it doesn't quite match and it still plays fine in here, especially at quarter speed. But we can also go up here and go sequence and you can go maybe maybe yours is playing a little bit choppy you can go sequence and then render in to out and what rendering does you'll see in a second i won't render this whole thing but you can see this stretch as it's rendering just went green so green is the like i play smoothly because now i've rendered it to kind of match the timeline i've okay and that's now, so it's still choppy. Sometimes you got to watch it a few times through, and especially on the export, it'll be it'll be fine. But the the green usually uh, allows it to play smoother, and maybe especially if it went to full, then it might be able to play. Okay, so if your footage is choppy, make sure you render it. Okay, next let's take a look at up top here. So there is um, within this window when you click on any clip, there's effect controls which is a whole other tutorial and that's um, about position scale rotation all that kind of stuff you can mess with all those the volume is in there of your clip you can there's effects here and when you click on effects um, sometimes this happens it's a good thing that happened so if this happens then you can go to window and you can go to workspaces and you can go reset to saved layout. There it goes. Okay, so our, our layout comes back. Um, and then if that ever happens, just make sure you go over and go file, save. Okay, so we're back to our layout, but it's slightly different. Over here, effects have popped up. So there's a whole other section here. And Within here, there is audio effects, audio transitions, video effects, video transitions. There's your custom bins, and there's a whole bunch of other things that you don't need to know right at this moment. And we're going to end back at our files over here. So we have our files, and uh, I'm going to squish that down again. So we have our files over here, and I told you you can color code them, but you can also scroll down to the bottom of this and you can make a new bin as well so within a new bin I can name this uh, let's say angles and then if you color code them before you can drag all the ones that are your camera angles into that bin so you can sort them out that way